So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, we are waiting for Chris Sloan, who just restarted his computer. But um, we have been for a month now. This is our fourth week kind of working on this, working on um, college admission essays. And, um, and in particular, using a chapter from Real wor World Writing by uh, Jessica Early. And she's been with us the last few weeks. And one of the things we did in the first couple of weeks was think about audience and um, topic and using AI to support kids in that. Um, and then what we ended up doing last week was testing AI, let's call them AI tutors for now. Hi, Chris. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Good. Okay. Well. Good, good. And and Chris, uh, I've been saying, uh, Chris tested, we went through them last week, um, and we can look at them again quickly. Um, the and, and then Chris played with them with his students. We're going to see what his students did with them, if that's fair. Um, yeah. So, and, and I'll push the uh, introduction a little bit further to say that um, it's bigger than these four elements, but we selected four elements. One is the introduction. Another is um, details in a story. Third is a so what section. And then that kind of merges into the conclusion. Um, and then I'm going to let, and then so there are four picnic tables around. Uh, we developed templates at this point in Youth Voices. We haven't put it in Now Comment yet, although that's quite possible to do pretty quickly. Um, all right. Any questions or thoughts about that yet? Or you know, Paul, ideas? I had, a, yeah. I had a question coming off of sure. last week's comments, and this picks up on what Bob was saying. I think we were both talking about the same thing. There was one thinking partner. I don't know if that's the term you use in the Youth Voices side of it, but one um, template. A, yeah. One template where the AI responded in first person and mm -hmm. uh, had a very strong reaction to like, whoa, okay, fair enough. It's, it's writing in first person. It's sounding like my text. How am I going to handle that? So and, it, it, um, wrote a, it wrote an introduction for yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, was a, it was a mechanic that could sort of proceed in that way. And, but, and I'm wondering if I left and I was thinking about this after the, after the session, you know, there's a characteristic to the, the, the the AI is responding to what the student had written and extending what the student had written. Uh, would it be possible to sort of invert that um, that template so that it writes a similar kind of a style with a similar sort of improvement strategy, but not on the same topic? So in the case oh. of the student that, that Chris had shared. So and give an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it was Chris's example, I think I'm trying to remember, was a student who was doing... Um, what was she doing? She was she was doing entrepreneurship stuff and art, something like that. I mm -hmm. remember him. And acting. And, and acting, that's right. And the AI kind of picked that up and started just riffing on it in that paragraph. But you know, that presents a sort of parallel. And you know, to the extent the AI was going to be um, sharing examples that that speak to word choice and sentence structure or tone or something like that. Um, would it be useful to sort of describe a parallel setting that has some of the same Textual, yeah, attributes. and then and then and then you couldn't use it to cheat, basically, right? Yeah. Well, no, you couldn't. Or, but you would you you would yeah. be looking at a stylistic extension of your work that might give you a different way to think about those attributes as something to look reach towards. Maybe might be making too much of the mimetic thing that is actually having it right in my voice and pick up my story and kind of fill it in for me. But I was thinking about that after your after last week's session. Interesting thought. I so what you will find at each picnic is uh, it's, I, I'm I feel like I'm jumping some of you right in the middle of a conversation. So if, let us know if we need to fill in some of the gaps. But at each table, what we did was we looked at a couple of templates, two or three. The first ones were like mm, we weren't so happy with what they were giving us because it was generating text for the student. And then the other ones we based on Jessica 
Early's text. And so they're called genre templates. Um, and those gave those those give feedback to the students. And what I talked to Chris about, and it is, I think you did this right, Chris, um, was to just use the good ones. <laughs> I don't know, good or bad, you know. The appropriate ones for my setting, I would say. There we go. Um, so, but but I think it's interesting to see the range of possibility within those four elements that we've identified that AI could do and then just say, you know what? We like this one that gives feedback, I think. Mm. Other thoughts are from all of you, and then I want to kind of turn it over as much as possible to Chris, and maybe we can show some of the work, Chris, or I'll get it up and show yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but, uh, but other thoughts or questions that you're having at this point? You get what we're doing here? Is this making sense? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thoughts? You have to unmute to talk. <laughs> I'm willing just to jump in, Paul. Sure. I don't really understand, but <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Um, well, Chris, did you use all four or did you focus on the one? So um, <clears throat> we did two. And, um, okay. you know, just to kind of give a little context to what I was up to today. Um, we only had an hour and 15 minute class and we are reading also Stephen King's on writing because like they're writing a college essay and we're reading a lot of, uh, memoir autobiography kind of writing. So we talked, uh, we read a section today and we talked about how in this, if you've read his book, he's like, I don't really remember my childhood. And then he vividly remembers certain things about it. So we just talked about like, wow, that's really good description. So the template that I thought was most appropriate to start with was the one that's called, um, it's called, wait for it, it's called uh, Using Description. Uh, and so, so um, from, you know, so there was 45 minutes left of class. And so I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so I talked about my philosophy on using AI generally boils down to we don't want it to do it for us we want it to help us become better writers and we're going to use a site and i gave him a quick little talk about what youth voices is and what um in general what we've tried to do for 20 years this is their first day in there right yeah. first day first day and i'm like okay let's go log in <laughs> uh and so they went and i had them they have actually been um taking a whack at their college application admission essays which is this thing that's really a big deal to them every year this time. So, um, I mean, whether they seniors. wanted, to, what's that? These are seniors in high seniors, school. Seniors. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all pretty much going to college. Uh, and most of them pretty much have to do more than one application, uh, admission essay. So whether they want to or not, they're kind of like, okay, I've got to do this thing. And, you know, with the rise or the test optional world, it, they've been hearing and maybe it's true that the college application essay carries more weight so there seems to be a little bit more pressure maybe on that so um they have um we've spent some time um you know going through jessica's that chapter four i've been you know going through the sequence of you know imagining the audience and and those kinds of things so finally they have a draft um where i felt like they had most of them had something that they could use today. And so I thought the, the safest place to start would be with just looking at description. Because most of them in, I would say a lot of them are kind of general. Uh, they don't, you know, it's kind of an abstractness that has, so, that's, yeah, right. So why don't, we, why don't we slow down? I don't think we have to go to the picnic table. Um, it, it's, we can just show here. I sure. think so people don't have to move around. But just so you know, it's up and to the right. There's a link to um, Dr. Early's um, part of the chapter about description there and, and what she says um, and the language we use to create the template. I'm going to share a screen and maybe you could just kind of show 
what you did. Is that okay, Chris? Sure. Or you uh, want to share a screen? Um, I have so the posts. Here. When you say show what I did, okay. Um, well, I don't know that they're so, all super comfortable. I'm um, sharing the essay itself. Okay. But, but um, is there one we could look at? Sure, sure. There's one. Like if what I'd like them. Um, so they did. They copied their application essay up top. Then I had them um, use uh, the description and the introduction uh, feedback templates. You did. So why don't we show that? Can you pick one for me to sure. use? Or I um, should have asked you ahead. Give me a second, yeah. and, and I'll find one because I think what we'll do is we'll zip down to the feedback they got and their their thoughts about that feedback. Okay. Um, let's see here. I I've been kind of tracking what they've been up to here. Oh, okay. Um, kind of an interesting one. I mean, there's they're all interesting. Um, let's go to, um, do you see Allie? Yeah, it's we on, don't have last names here. We're just Right, yeah. On the front page, I think she is. I think she's on the first page. Of what? Well, you're, um, oh. Should be coming here. A-L-L-I-E? Correct. Here we go, okay. Okay, so let's zip okay. down a couple so, of, But But no. before we do that, Chris, I think people need to see again how this works. So just be Allie for a second, I think. And what did Allie do? Um, she's, uh, if you look at number one, let's just go down to number well, one. Well, she put her essay into. Correct. Yeah. The, and then let's look at the notes. How about, so go to the big number one. Okay. okay. So that's the. Just go to number, yeah, number one, yeah. Um, Chris, so I, Chris, 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 <laughs> I, I, I think we need to show using the template what it what it looks like a little bit. Sure. Um, could think? we use my sample essay that I did? Yeah, you're wor you're worried about show. Oh, you're worried about showing the essay. Right. I, you know, like the whole my whole point with this was it sometimes can be really private um so like we can show the feedback and we can show their thoughts on it but i'd rather okay. not show their i understand i understand the concern now. yeah okay yeah because it's this weird genre where really no one else reads it except the stranger and so that there are you know some that i've read through that are you know they definitely don't want it shared okay so i'm going so to your the new title i think that was my sample one oops <laughs> 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 There's another one. Sorry. There's uh, one more. Other I think than I had. That, yeah, that was a test yesterday, Paul. There's. I know. Yeah. Um, let me. Uh, I'll go to that one if you don't mind. Just a second. I'll put it in myself. What? I'll go back to that draft. What are you going to do? I'm going to go to that. Here, let's use. Let's just use losing track of time. Is that okay? Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, everyone, we're here again. <laughs> Let's, here's what happens. The student puts their essay. This is one from three years ago, so we can use this one. Yep. Student grabs their essay. Um, the, um, do you want to explain? You sure. So then I told them, go to the AI Mojo, which is the little game controller icon up in the top right. And then I had them go, you know, click their cursor at the end of their essay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I said, let's go to genre number four, I believe it is. Uh, no, not four. Yeah, you're close. Five, I think. Genre, uh, six, zero six. It's not the lead for, okay. Yeah. Okay. This okay. is description. Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, we had just read this bit about what makes, or, you know, like talked about good description and everything. And so then I said, um, the third one there, insert everything from the top until the selected block. And then I said, let's generate. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to so inside the template is um, Dr. Early's dis uh, 
description of how you use senses to describe something. So what the student gets back is this. Um, somebody volunteer to read that for us, just to see if you're still here. <laughs> Your writing is creative and Thank engaging, you. and you have a good handle on description. In your text, you discuss how you imagine yourself in different scenarios and how you'd build a business out of fashion in high school. You also explain how you feel when certain activities captivate you and make you lose track of time. To further enhance your writing, consider adding more descriptive details about the five senses, seeing, tasting, smelling, hearing, touching. For example, when you discuss acting, you can add how you see different emotions and themes in the scenes that you imagine. You can also discuss how the fabric of the clothing you sell feels in your hands and how the sense of the store reminds you of your business. These added details would bring your writing to life and make it even more vivid for your readers. So I would say that that feedback received both um positive and um they negative. got very similar kind of feedback right yeah yeah right and um so some of the kids were like "Ooh, i don't, I don't want to know what that smelled like you know but then i explained well <laughs> you know we were looking at the senses right and um and so we had been talking about senses and descriptive writing so they were like oh okay um, and then some people were like, yeah, you know, like I was describing a dance and I realized now like, oh, I could be more visually engaging with that. So with that particular template, a um, couple people pointed out saying like, I, I didn't really like that one, but I like the introduction one better. And a couple people um, specifically said, you know, this was helpful. So who was the student we were, we started at again? Um, um find her again holly yeah okay so i'm not going to go the essay i'm going to go down and let's so this is what's really wonderful here is that we're we're getting actual student feedback on this it's not just how we imagine a writer might um think about it mm -hmm. um and it is coming up any thoughts questions as we're going here Okay, her notes. So this is what the AI gave us. Can I get, we get another volunteer reader? <laughs> Just to get a sense of what the AI does, or should I do it? I'll go, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> you want number one? Yes. Your writing definitely captures a strong sense of nostalgia and longing for the past. You have a knack for painting vivid images with your words. For example, when you talk about swinging and nearly flying off the hammock on the front lawn, I can easily imagine the scene. Similarly, when you talk about wading in the shallow end of Long Lake, I can feel the sensation of the cool water on the skin. To further enhance the sensory experience of your writing, you could add in more examples of what you saw, tasted, smelled, heard, and touched while at your grandparents' home. For example, you could describe the smell of the evergreen trees on the property, the sound of a loon in the evening, or the taste of freshly made blueberry pancakes for breakfast. With a few more examples like these, your writing would become even more vivid and memorable. And just to so, be clear, she copied from the and put it here on the left side. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, right. I had him do that. I said, you know, copy the notes that you found helpful into the body of the text itself because again we didn't have a lot of time and i wanted him to try to capture some of the thinking so any thoughts about how ai is talking to students here or just like what do you what do you think don't want to call on you but love to have you just if you I'm, got that I'm, kind of feedback how would you feel yeah i'm just blown away i'm just going back to you you know, when I taught high school and, and middle school, the number of essays, I'm sure Chris is probably graded and keeps grading right now, but wow, that's pretty good feedback right there. Um, I love that the kids are getting to choose the feedback. I'm curious about like, that'd be cool to know more about like the process and how you got kids to choose which feedback would be um, the best, or if it was just more like go choose the one you think would be the best for yourself. Probably the quick and dirty answer is you can generate again and again 
and it gives you different stuff, different feedback. Yeah, but what template to choose is is always oh, right. Be yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, today was pretty directed. You know, I I actually thought different templates would work for different people, but I thought introducing that with the time I had would not have been effective. <laughs> is is there a since you you have the AI giving all of the feedback? Is there somewhat of a like how do you direct students so that they know what's going to be good feedback versus? back because i think a lot of times stu they students will get into a, a point where they feel like they have to take all the feedback and a lot of times it's like no you don't that's feedback mm -hmm. is your choice so yeah i feel like if i were to do a likert scale of people's confidence i feel like the more confident writers were more selective and critical of the feedback um in general mm. um and so yeah i think that there's a lot of conversations to happen about what we actually got today um so yeah but um yeah um, well, I just, and, and can i just said that go ahead well paul or chris I have a question Wait, go ahead chris yeah. david go ahead okay I, I i'm trying to remember if the interface at this stage lets students change the so the temperature of the reply i mean so that if they it does, like, yes, yeah. So so they're going. They, you can keep getting different responses, but in, it is it is it a bridge too far to think students might say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to really up the language model's complexity or its its boundaries and see if it does. You know, it, it, is that worth playing with? I've not experimented well, with that way. I did have context. someone ask about it, but I kind of was dismissive today because uh, I was just like, let's just try this. Um, sure. So yeah, but uh, somebody right away said like, "What about this slider here? What if I move it?" Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's that was, um, and and on the, on the of choosing, you know, there are, I keep saying this, but there are over templates, right? And even even in this more con controlled experiment that we're doing, we had three templates for looking at description. But if the student were to test each of those, the 45 minutes would be gone, right? So <laughs> how to get them the quality feedback they need, but then all to learn the AI is always going to be a good. But then eventually down the in the year, I think hope they go back and say, hey, there was a really good description one. Which one was that, Chris? And and they would, you know, you would tell them, oh, that's you know, genre, or whatever. So the teacher has to be very really competent about, or, or not competent, really knowledgeable what's in the templates and yeah, and the student needs to play with them. Does that yeah. answer some of that question? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think um, I missed. Should we look? Yeah. I think I misunderstood. I, I thought, just because I'm not super familiar with it, but I thought that the students chose it and copied and pasted the feedback they thought was best on the left. And that's what yeah, we're looking yeah. at, the one and two. Yeah, they and then did. that's what I was just asking is how did they? What I, I was just like, how but did they, they arrive they, at that point? So to 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 be able to choose what was best, or was it not? They chose John. They chose they chose genre six, which we titled it because okay. we talked about it, and Chris thought that would be the best one to use. Yeah, and in this know, the, case, but then eventually, I hope there is more choice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, most of them, I'd say, took either chose the notes, the feedback they got the first time, or they didn't. You know, I just said, if you found it useful, put it in there. Um, and so some of them didn't really copy and paste anything back in under their essay. Um, this person did. Uh, and so, yeah. So let's look at let's look at the another one. Um, her other response. Or yeah. So this received. one was uh, genre. I think the one right under it Five. about introductions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica calls them leads, but yeah. So, you know, and, and basically it's, it's, it makes sense to me because she's in her chapter, she says like, you know, a lot of what they found good college admission essay writing was were, were lead paragraphs that did things like ask a question or start with an anecdote or start with a quote. And so the, everybody got 
option one, two, three along those lines of like, oh, think about asking this question or how about a, an idea for an anecdote is option two. But, but specific, specific to their content. To their right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Ahead, yeah. But I mean, I guess my point is that was tied to what we were talking about in class. Like those are good ideas for openers. And so I told them like, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm thinking of when I'm evaluating your papers. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. So um, it's not off the wall for sure, uh, because we had actually talked about it. And um, so, the, you know, they're getting feedback about the stuff that we have identified as potentially good strategies. And what I imagine is that you will have you maybe you will have read the essay or or mm -hmm. peers will have and they could say, you know what, it needs a stronger introduction. And then they could go to genre five and see what five says and so you know, get some ideas for what to do. Yeah. That kind and of flow is what I'm imagining. That, yeah. And I and again flow. I yeah. kept emphasizing we don't want it to write it for us. So like you look at that and it, does that give you an idea? And most of their feedback that I got today, uh, I guess I'm jumping ahead because we should probably look at this one. No, that's fine. Um, no, it's okay. But you want to read okay. the, that live for us, Chris? Yeah, so this yeah, is, this um, is an interesting words. thing here. Yeah. So everybody at the very end wrote their thoughts on the feedback. And hers was not, was, not only was the feedback I received extremely impressive, but it was also genuinely helpful. It gave me a new sense of confidence in my writing while also giving advice on how I could improve it. It gave specific examples and gave me options as to how I could improve my writing and organize my thoughts. So I, I picked up on that because I thought, wow, um, you know, this idea of gaining confidence with writing is pretty important. You know, mm -hmm. and so I was like, that's cool. Um, and, and that gave me insight into this writer, too. It's like, OK, so she's not feeling super confident about potentially this piece and maybe other writing. So the mm -hmm. feedback was helpful for me, too. OK, shall we slow down or speed up or whichever? Let's slow down a little bit. Let's see if there's do you see what we're trying to do and what do you think about it? What else should we do? That kind of thing. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and see if we can just have some conversation about this. It's very exciting to hear your hear your stories in the field, Chris. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's always. I mean, and Paul, to your point earlier, the 45 minutes disappears in a heartbeat. But the idea that kids are engaging tools and going through a step process. And I'm sure not everyone's doing it the way that example is unfolded, but you're describing, yeah. work, you're describing very tangible, expressive workflow that's speaking to kids, you know? And uh, Yeah. And, and there's, here's another one that kind of falls in that same category. This writer says, my thoughts on feedback from AI were that it was interesting and helpful. I liked how it made me think about my essay from a different perspective. For instance, wrong one, sorry. My thoughts on the AI's feedback. Not only was the feedback I received extremely impressive, but it was also genuinely helpful. It gave me a new sense of confidence in my writing. Yeah. It's also really fun to think of you in a classroom setting because my recollection of being in a classroom setting, no matter whether they were fourth graders or college people, was there were moments when students were working together in small groups and the room began to hum and um, I wasn't having to do much, right? And so it's easy to imagine some amount of this engagement unfolding like that as a routine that they come to get, they come to trust more and more as the school year unfolds. I mean, you're only what, two weeks into school now and you're you're having this encounter like this? I mean- Well, this was the first time using it today, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see this this way, yeah. Yeah. The Sorry, I read a couple of the one I really meant to mention was another student said I've been nervous to That's, let yeah, him. yeah, read read through it. Go ahead. Just Chris, that. let you're gonna read through some of the Yeah, yeah. So this Good. one writer says, I've been nervous to let anyone read my essay because it still isn't close to being ready. So it was nice to get actual helpful feedback that I can use to make my essay better without having to share it with someone I'm not comfortable with. Hmm. So like that was what I went back to originally, why I thought that AI might help in this particular context is 
they, when I asked the students, I gave them a survey, like, do you want to work on your college essay in class or is it all done? And like, everybody's like, no, we need help. And then I said, well, what would be most helpful? And the, the thing that came in last place was sharing my essay <laughs> with you. And I think that hits on why, you know, it's like, I, I I'm yeah. nervous to begin with because I'm not really ready with this, you know, high stakes thing they perceive. And then you know, having to share it with someone I'm not comfortable with is a common scenario we do in our classes, like, you know, count off into fives and read your essay. Um, so I thought in this case, if AI were scripted to give feedback, like I would give feedback, um, mm -hmm. that that might lessen some of that anxiety that that student was talking about. You know, Joe yeah. Stodronsky, the eighth grade teacher um, who has experimented with these templates also, um, her students said something similar um, in that these are eighth graders. And and that, that student, she said, um, you know, when I go to a, a, a small group to get feedback, I'm also dealing with I'm a friend of hers. And, she, you know, I like all of the social stuff that she's dealing with mm -hmm. at, the, mm -hmm. at the same time as she's to get feedback on her work when she goes to the computer like all of that other stuff is not there now i i don't want to say that's always a great thing because maybe all that mm. social stuff is important i don't know yeah but but it maybe it's not always what what a writer needs right so it, yeah yeah and then there's 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 this ethical perspective too you know like when i first introduced it to the class because i haven't talked about ai at all all year so far. And it's like, I think we're in the fifth week. Uh, and so I'm just like, okay, AI. And there were a lot of knowing glances, furtive looks of like, I said, <laughs> now I know some of you are familiar with um, creating AI, you know, and presenting it as your work. And, you know, there are a lot of snickers and, you know, side looks. Um, but here's uh, one writer says, I think this is a better way to use AI as a tool. I think this was helpful because it was giving me things I could do better without making me think I would get in trouble for using AI to write my essay. I like that AI isn't writing my essay, but it's helping me like any other editor would. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris, I have, a, I have a related question. I don't know if you've had time or if it's even something that speaks to you given all, every, everything you're managing during your school day, but. I'm thinking when you look at the feedback that AI is giving and it's taking the role of the teacher or it's providing like a, a it's, it's, it's a helping hand, it's an assistant in the room. I don't know, you can think of it any way you wanna anthropomorphize it, but essentially it's the role of the teacher or a mentor of which you're the lead example in the room. Did you, are you scanning those things and saying, yeah, that sounds good or gosh, it's not as smart. I, I would have said it this way. I'm just curious with you as the teacher because I'm not trying to, take it out, but I can imagine a year from now, there are going to be templates that are going to allow you as teacher and your prep work to design the voice of the AI to some degree. And I'm curious at this stage, as you're just starting to play with it, if you're seeing the intelligence in the language model that Paul's bolted on here is, is in your mind, um, good enough, not good enough, better than what you thought as a teacher? What do you, what do you stand on that from what you've seen so far? I mean, I think, um, in general, I think there was a feeling of pleasant surprise in the, the mm -hmm. feedback from the students. But I also think there's an under kind of undertow of like, I want to talk to someone about this. So I, in general, they're pretty savvy, I think. And so they didn't just accept everything. Um, yeah. And that most of them are saying like, oh, OK, I'm, I could think about this in a different way. But I really didn't get... Um, uh, maybe that's not answering your question, but I don't get the sense that um, that they thought it was spot on. You know, right. I think the word helpful probably pops up more than anything. And you as teacher, you felt that you, you're even scanning what you're seeing coming at them when these responses come out. You're like, yeah, that's good. It's not, well, you're not disappointed. You're feeling it's good enough. It's feeling it could be better. You're well, I'm not disappointed because it's more than they would have gotten today. Right. from their peers. Um, right. But, um, you know, it's when we drilled down with the time we had, a lot of them were pretty critical, like, ah, I don't know about that one. Um, mm. So getting them to think about helpful feedback 
seems pretty important because I don't know that my traditional way of doing it in the past maybe was as effective as I wanted it to be either. Hmm. Worth noting again, that they're more confident to be critical of the computer than they would be of you, of your Or family. of their friends, for sure, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. the friends, yeah, right? right. <laughs> Yeah. So that learning, yeah. learning that, you know, you know, I, I, I have control over what I'm getting is a good thing to learn. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we one, kind of one, went really fast. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. You're good. I mean, one writer, no, for example, is just like the description template was a little bit lacking luster because it brought up the five senses, which seemed really out of left field for the essay that I was writing about. So, you know, they are, there is this kind of critical lens they're taken to. I, I did notice somebody said that they liked that there was both positive feedback and then mm -hmm. um, critical feedback. They liked that there was both. And I was actually down the line, like, like if they use this template again, they're going to make fun of it, right? Like, oh, now it's going to do this. They're going to like predict what it does. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not all bad. <laughs> Which, if it's no, it's if it's tied to the pedagogical aims, you know, or the you know the yeah, rubric. Yeah, yeah. So what I was going to say is that last week we went very fast through the third element, and I wanted to kind of chat again, if that's okay, and, and look at yeah. that. You didn't do so what with them at all. No, I there? thought we weren't ready for the so what, so I didn't go there today. Okay, um, so but we're definitely headed toward doing the so what because most of the essays I've read do not really address the so what kind of thinking. Say a little bit about what the, what that is. Yeah. Well, it's partly, as I understand, it's partly understanding your audience and like why you're writing this thing. So they could have these amazing testimonials of, um, you know, my mom nearly died in a car accident and I had to take over for the family, you know, like, great, but um, this kind of reflective piece to it, um, you know, so what does that mean to somebody who wants to accept you to this college um, to take a step back and not just tell a compelling narrative, not just good. I've, I've read some that have excellent description, but I'm like, literally, I thought to myself, so what? So, um, <laughs> so what thing is where we're going yeah so um we're using that same essay about drama and business um that we've been using um i'm opening i opened up a mojo and this is kind of different than we've done with the templates and i don't think you've done this yet either chris so no i haven't done so it with the class. exploring this with you too okay right mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to open chat GPT over here. And what uh, do I want to show both versions or do I want to show, show both versions? Now, let, let's not. Let's just show the one. So we could just get a chat GPT response to the essay. And you can imagine it's, it's relatively vanilla. It's, you know, somewhat interesting. It sort of gives you an outline of the essay if you say, what do you think of it? All right. But we can do, um, yeah, you can do this on chat, chat GPT too, but you can give it a persona, right? And we gave it a set persona. In particular, we use a language, again, that Dr. Early uses in her chapter four of the, of the book um, for telling what, um, well, so what section is. So I, I went to chat GPT. GPT, the so what persona. Um, now what I have to do is I have to copy the whole essay. Sorry, my fingers aren't working. Um, and I'm just going to say, what do you think? Or let's just ask a question like, what else might I? Uh, I'm not getting the whole essay. All right. I think, Dave, we learned this is called stuffing the uh, uh, prompt. Is right? This is, um, okay. What else? Right. That's exactly what it is, isn't it? 
What else might I add? This, right? I ask the question, I pop the essay in here, I hit send. It takes a little while, but um, instead of the more generic vanilla outline, um, it would come back and say, oh, you, you could do this at the end, you could do this. It's not tell what chat GPT does, but it isn't as helpful as I think <laughs> this is. OSA. And any questions as it's spinning? Thoughts? <laughs> Ideas? I guess I'm just wondering why you asked the original question. Yeah. Oh, rather than just put the essay in? Yeah. I don't think it would know what to do with the essay. You got to tell it something to do. Right. You gotta but ask. isn't it so it's not doing so what? Like, so what isn't the question? Like, what do you no. think is the top? Oh. Like, okay. The relevance of this? It might work that way. I don't know. <laughs> um, I haven't tried it both ways. Okay. But let's look what it gave us here. Um, so you've done an excellent job of sharing your personal experience and passions, which really help us paint, help, helps paint a vivid picture of who you are. Now, let's shift gears a bit and delve into so what section of your essay, the so what. This is where you step back from the narrative and directly address your reader, explaining why your story is significant and what lessons you've learned from it. You know, I kind of just boilerplate from Jessica at that point, but um, your your love of creativity, whether it's in or fashion, is clear. But what should what should your reader, or more specifically, the college admissions officer, care about? What unique perspective skills have these experiences given you that will bring you to to their college? That you will bring to their college? How have these experiences shaped your future goals? Also consider have your how. Your experiences might, this is goes on, right? But how your experiences might resonate with others. Who else could benefit from hearing your story? This isn't just about sharing personal experiences. This is about making connections with an outside audience. It's essential that your story has meaning for people beyond your immediate circle. So, so let's go deeper into your experiences. Um, when you lose track of time acting or creating imagery, imaginary scenes, what do you learn about yourself? What does this say about your problem-solving skills? Um, I'm not going to read the, well, I guess so. Similarly, when you're managing your online fashion, what skills are you honing? Are you learning about perseverance, dedication, or value of hard work? Are you getting insights? Blah, blah, blah. Reflect on these questions and consider how your experiences have shaped your individual. Okay. Quick thoughts about that. If if you were a writer and you got that kind of uh, response to your essay, thumbs <laughs> up. Wow, wow, I'm gonna. Yeah, what think, do you mean thumbs up? Yeah, good. Uh, I'm a fan of questions, and I think there were a lot of questions in that feedback, which give the mm -hmm. student a chance to engage with, you know, their mental. In life and base it's basically creating a thought process an opportunity for them to think is a better way to say it and that's what i really love about that feedback the validation is nice i love that but the questions for me are what really makes it meaningful because it's not doing the work and this was the big issue last week it's it's pushing the you know opportunities for students to deepen their thinking and reflect it in their writing so i like all those questions as you That's say good that, coaching. though, some, good coaching somebody, somebody, somebody earlier, I think Scott mentioned earlier, like how that's great response, but how then do you get the the writer to take it in and and you? Uh, that's a whole another teaching thing. How do you get kids to think? I and mean, that's yeah, but I mean, the question, right? Way to do it. Um, so I said, wow, but where do I start, right? So just because I wanted to give the example of you can continue the dialogue here with with the chatbot in this case, 
right? Don't worry, it can feel overwhelming at first, but let's break it down into manageable steps. Think about what you learned from acting. Now think about what these lessons are. Now consider, right? Kind of gives you an outline of what to do, but not an outline of the of the essay, an outline of how to proceed. Thoughts? How's it, how's it do that? Is that also something that you constructed? How's it? How's it doing this next step? I don't know. It, it's figuring that out itself. Although okay. it's based on it's based on our description of that person, right? Which we can look at. Um, if you just, I mean, really, I just basically copied Doctor Early's mm -hmm. text and put it in there. Um, what would our next question be? One thing. Well, I, I know that like, oh, I know when, when, you know, working with young writers, it's, I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the, uh, who the writer, it was, um, I think writing well, it was the name of the book, but it was always, we'd always ask him, and this kind of goes to the, so what that you're talking about, but sort of like, what are you trying to say? Have you said it? Um, would someone who saw this or encountered this for the first time, be able to get what you're trying to say? And so getting them to step back in that lens. So I wonder if that might be the questions to help get to the so what while still providing the thinking where I can say it, it could almost be more objective and step back and go, well, here's what you said. And then you can look at it as a student and go, wait, that's not my, that, was, that wasn't my point. <laughs> this is what I wanted to say. Uh-huh. What if we, what if we be a writer who thinks they've done it already, right? Let's see what happens. Wait. I already have my so what. Imagine a kid feeling that way. Or writer. As it's spinning thoughts. <laughs> well, and you could say now what? Follow that up with now what? Mm -hmm. Can you scroll you, up, Paul, to the original feedback? Yeah, well, yeah. the original is right. Yeah, how yeah, far? The, 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 yeah, that one. So there's a validation, and then it then, then starts the question. And then, so there's not only you, validation, you there's the, also a def definition of the what so what is, right? Good, yeah. 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 Um, so y if the if the if the if there are too many questions, if there's too much food for thought, if if that's provoking a, you know, wow, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know where to start, then maybe the maybe we should coach the so what persona to you know not go too far with the oh. the number of questions or you know like make the response limited so that overwhelming fire hose effect might be mitigated. But I still think that that's a positive coaching stance to ask beautiful questions. All right, let's see what it answered here. Great, Maybe you feel you've already, you've already addressed the so what and say then you're ahead of the game. However, <laughs> it's always worth re revisiting you to ensure you, it can be as strong as it can be. It's uh, consider whether you literally communicate for instance, you shared your acting. Oh, wow. This is, but let's dig a bit deeper. It's kind of amazing that it actually no, is keep engaging, going. right? Yeah. And, but it's not engaging abstractly. It's engaging with what is in the essay. I guess one of the things that I like about what I'm seeing here is that it's continually looping back to uh, who's the audience. And that was... You know, one of the biggest things I would say that Jessica pointed out and that my students have a problem with, and that is like, the, who's the essay? Like, I don't know, I'm just supposed to write this college application thing. And they care a lot about it. But um, yeah, I like the fact that it keeps talking about, but and the context. So like this is, I, I'm teaching, you know, rhetorical situation and, you know, rhetoric and that. And so this is all coming back to, this piece of writing in this context for this audience, you know, those are, it's, it's keeps, 
hitting on those points. I think this has to be, this really feels like it would be very important for, for, you know, I, I'm, I know a student who's working on her personal statement, just that the anonymity, the safety, and if they can get enough of that, like being noticed, being seen, being like um, validated, I think there's a real win here for, for young writers and especially around the personal statement, which they don't, like you said earlier, because they don't want to share it with their peers. They may not even want to share it with their teacher um, and, and, or their parents. It's really rough going. And I love that they could do it and start to build a rapport with some feedback loop that they could start to trust, even if it's kind of wacky at times. But if they, yeah, there's got to be some calculus for just enough to keep them coming back and probing. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that I'll go back to is this, the statement that a student said that makes more sense now that we've been talking about it. Um, the writer says, I like the feedback because it was helpful for getting better ideas at the beginning of the essay and just general topics that someone would give you. But when I'm further along in my essay, I would, I would probably just want more personal advice from a person. And I think, you know, maybe that's helpful for a lot of kids that they, they, they don't feel confident about this genre because it's like this high stakes thing and it's personal uh, and they don't know how much to share, but maybe, you know, it helps them get further down the road. And then like, now yeah. I'm ready to talk to people. That's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, th those things are true about this particular assignment, but I think mm -hmm. it's true about a lot of assignments. <laughs> Anything mm -hmm. that goes public and often is personal and anyway. So That's it's a good true. example. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel um, like it speaks a little bit to what David was asking. I, I don't know, like as a teacher, would you say this was like enough, right? And it's enough maybe for like part of a process, but not the whole thing. You know, I mean, what would be disturbing or upsetting is if people were like, oh, just use that robot and then your writing will be good. You know, mm -hmm. like that's where you don't want to be. Right. But what if what if the, the bot eventually, Christina, was as good, if not better than the teacher? What what if? Well, I'm just thinking I'm just thinking like not not thinking that any one source is like the best source, right? That there's like multiple that you should get feedback from multiple people or to really make your writing strong. Right now I think we assume that a college coach or a teacher or a parent might be the true expert and that we could maybe use the AI to get to a point where now we're ready to share with the true expert. But I'm not sure that that's, that's always going to be the case that I think yeah. gets smarter than, than any of us. I hate to say it, but I guess if it, if it goes to the point where only robots are reading college admissions essays, then it makes total sense. But as long as they're being read by humans, it feels like we don't want to lose that human element. Can I ask? I was just trying this, Paul. Sorry, cut in. Mm -hmm. um, oh, good. What's yeah. what's this one called? This template called? Or so it's not a template. It's over. It's over under Chat GPT on the right side. It's the furthest right tablet there. Temp, oh, whatever it is. Oh, oh, oh that's why you. I see. Okay. Right. And and, and you can list personas. I I put in by the way the habits of mine. But the idea is if if managing impulsivity is an issue, instead of just getting back to GPT, you can put in and say, I'm starting this new project and I'm worried and it'll it'll use mine to to, re to reply to you, right? Which is kind of interesting. And by the way, SIFT for reliability, you can put in a URL and it'll mm -hmm. tell you it's a reliable source or not. <laughs> wow. um, you're, you're asking AI if it's a reliable source. But <laughs> anyway. that's my yeah. That's you can headed. you can pick that. But but what we it, it, uh, um, we, we, in in the persona we were very careful to say do not give me sources right. So what you on that? that get, instead tell me where you're getting where I can check this person. Anyway, so this whole persona thing is I. I 
one thought somebody said is it enough i actually think we're, this example is makes me think it's too much right so if i say i'm not reactive and i come to a teacher or i don't know how to be reflective sorry ai is giving me five ways to be reflective i think what a teacher or can do is not give me the whole encyclopedia, right? They, they would give me a more careful analysis. Oh, you're really good at journaling. Why don't you try that, right? Or you'd prioritize. Yeah. So I, I think there, there's something there's something in there. Yeah. And maybe we can make the persona better. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, in response to your comment, Paul. I mean, when I read these things and I just the breadth of the comments and the the the, the overall quality is just astounding. Part of me wants to think like, could what would be involved in scripting sort of a subcategory of coaching strategy into any one of these things where the AI kind of gets into sort of like, let's take a sentence. Why don't we make, why don't we work on a sentence together and sort of work out like small examples? Like these are big uh -huh. gesture ideas that presume a lot of agency or motivation. Um, uh, and, and sort of big picture comments, which are astoundingly um, clear and well-intentioned. Uh, and yet I'm wondering if there is a there would be a practical way to tease out sort of a next step effort, right? That's, that sort of would help the writer say, oh, that sentence works, I like that one. So we'll then say, okay, why, what would you, what did you not like? And then begins to work almost at a, at a sentence or a thinking level to kind of break things down. It's a much more active approach to the coaching. Yeah. Um, people, you know, I've, I remember Mo doing Malik that as Malik. a... As, yeah. Go ahead. Malik and Malik often in there, I didn't understand this, but I'm beginning to um, ask the AI to pause and wait for right. a response before you go in, right? So sure. figuring out where to ask it to pause, it, it would be an interesting... Yeah, or queuing up. I'm, I'm con question. I'm yeah. yeah, I'm reminded of a lot of the... the and and the, then the do what you're saying. Yeah. The mental health bots that sort of nudge and follow and kind of get into your stream of thinking just enough to kind of help you to the next level where there's there's a... In those instances, there's a pretty high stakes concern, right? Where people people's wellness is really on the table. But um, yeah. this is a very creative, playful way to tease out um, generation of thinking. Anyway, it's David, another level of stuff. What if at the end of the so prompt, Chris, when you quick, quick thought, at the end of the prompt, could, could AI mm -hmm. say, you know, was this helpful? Here are some places we could go next sure. and, and propose those. Oh, so options. you would choose then. Oh, yeah, so we could, go, we could go look at a paragraph together or we could talk about one of these you know, examples. That, that was a lot, you know, like they could literally say, that was a lot, I know. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. where would you, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's going, it's taking the funnel right down, yeah. That's a great idea. But in the meantime, <laughs> and we should, we should explore these things. Um, Chris, you might, when you're ready to do so, what with kids, play with this with them and oh, for sure, reactions yeah. too? Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. All right. Nice. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to call time. But uh, yeah, thank you all. Um, it's really I, great. Thank yeah. you for thank you for sharing all this stuff, Chris. It's really great. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. It's awesome. Here's all. All right. All right. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.